Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and I'm all dressed up today with nowhere to go because I'm in a shelter at home state. And so these clothes that I would wear to a special business meeting, perhaps to a place of worship, uh, maybe to a business casual sort of party, are sitting in my closet. Along with this sport jacket sitting in my closet, I have a whole bunch of pocket squares. Now, pocket squares are interesting because nowadays you can buy them very inexpensively at places like Marshall's, and they're generally made of silk. Silk has two characteristics that are interesting to us today. One is it's a fairly fine weave, and the other is they create static. And so it's very interesting. If you make a mask out of two layers of silk, we can just turn this into a triangle, attach it in the back, and you add a layer of cotton in the middle, which is something I read about in an article today. It blocks 80% of the bad things you want to block. So silk with a little bit of cotton is a very good way. But this happens to be a very long one. I might actually be able to tie this. Um, this is a relatively short pocket square and I wouldn't be able to tie it behind my head. So I needed to find a way to turn my pocket squares, which come in beautiful colors, into practical masks for our current situation. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to prototype those clips that we're going to make for these masks, how to draw them in FreeCAD, and how I printed them and what they look like and how I made decisions about which one is best on my Ultimate 2 using Matter Hacker Basic PLA. Stay tuned, we'll learn something together. Okay, we're back. I've gotten rid of the sport coat, which I really don't need for uh, modeling a clip for a COVID-19 mask. But I do need a way to conceptualize, to think about what I'm going to build. So I looked at a series of pocket squares and I realized that for the shorter ones, I couldn't tie it behind my neck. And for the longer ones, I still wanted to be able to control how long, how tight it was. So how could I do that? Well, I'm a very physical kind of guy. I like to play with things. So I use a lot of foam board for making prototypes. So I made a little prototype here and I uh, originally tried it without tying a knot and they really don't clip in well enough. So I realized if I just tie a knot on the end, I could clip this in like this and it would hold very well. And then I could clip this around my neck and clip the other end. And this was way too small. Couldn't pull it up over my chin. So I continued to make prototypes. I made a little bigger one. And then I ran, started running out of foam board. So I thought, what can I use to make prototypes? And foam board, in fact, because of this foam in the middle, it's really hard to cut. You need a very, very sharp knife to cut it. So I don't know if your house is like mine, I have a lot of boxes that look like this around my house. People get excited when they show up. I then have to break all these boxes down and take them out every Sunday night to the trash. But I thought, wow, that would make a pretty decent prototyping material. And in fact, it's easier to cut than foam board. So how do I cut these? Well, I like using an X-Acto knife or one of these new magical mat knives and you get these at all the hardware stores, they're not expensive, that look like switch blades, but they all get dull very quickly. So if you're going to use these, you need to either have a sharpening stone so that you can sharpen these periodically. It's really a very easy thing to do to sharpen these. Or just get a piece of sandpaper and put your piece of sandpaper on the edge of your desk. And that, in fact, might work better. Now this is fine grit sandpaper. I think this is 600 grit. But make sure that whatever tool you're using is very, very sharp because, you know, there's an old saying, a sharp tool is a safe tool. Now I also like using these 
uh, mats that you get at the hobby stores that you can use underneath them. They do cut a bit, but it's better than damaging your dining room table. So I continued to make prototypes until I got one that worked really well. Now, in fact, this cardboard one, because it's a bit pliable, would actually work. You could just make these, um, give them out to your friends, but they're probably not as nice as a 3D printed model. So this last one, which is very thin, this is um, 0 0.80 millimeters thick, works great. Here we go. It's easy to use, it's easy to take on and off, and by adjusting the knots, I can use the same bracket for every one I have, or I'm going to publish both the STL file, that's the uh, file that would go into your slicer, and the free CAD, CAD design file, so you can modify these yourself. Okay, in this next segment, I'm going to go to the computer, and we're going to show you how to draw this particular model in FreeCAD. Okay, we're at my MacBook Pro. However, FreeCAD will run on both Macs and window machines. In fact, I've run it very successfully on my Surface Go, which is a very low-end window machines. It also run on Linux if you're into that type of thing. So we're looking at it on a Mac. Some of the keystrokes are slightly different. In essence, command and control get switched around, but I'll show you how to figure that out. So I've opened up the program. I'm going to show you quickly how to do this. This is not a FreeCAD tutorial, but I want to introduce you to the power of parametric design. Now let's stop there for a second. What is parametric design? Well, there are really two different ways, broadly, that use computer-aided design programs. There are programs like Tinkercad, where you have predefined objects, the cylinder, and then maybe you have a square and you combine them together. Sort of like stacking uh, kids' blocks together. Very easy to use, wonderful, good for teaching children, and I actually use Tinkercad for quite a number of things. Then there are programs like FreeCAD or Fusion 360, where you start by drawing a two-dimensional sketch and then you expand that out, explode that. In the case of FreeCAD, it's called pad it in order to create your three-dimensional object. And then once you have a three-dimensional object, if you want to make holes in it, you create pockets or holes. You extrude, in essence, in the opposite direction. The advantage of this is that each step along the way, you're saving a history of all the mathematical formulas that created that step. And I'm going to show you today that I initially created this bracket three millimeters thick. And it doesn't bend at all. So it's sort of stuck on the back of my head. It wasn't very comfortable. So then I created one 1.5. Well, that was better. But I thought, you know, how thin can I go and still make it strong? This is 0.8 millimeters. And this ends up being perfect. It also prints much faster. This prints in 20 minutes. So the ability to go from one to the other was literally a couple clicks. I didn't have to start all over um, or make a whole bunch of complicated changes like I would in an object-oriented model such as potentially Tinkercad. Okay, first I'm going to create a new file. And within the file I'm going to create a body. This is a body. Think of it as a, effectively a part. Then I'm going to start with a sketch, because we always start with a scratch sketch. I'm going to put it on the X, Y plane. That means this plane. And I'm going to take and draw a rectangle. I'm going to left click and drag, release, click again to set my rectangle, and then right click in order to release my tool. Now, this rectangle, if I click on it, is not locked in place at all. I can move it all about. Well, that's not very good. We want it to be locked both in space and we want its dimensions to be fixed. So I'm going to select this point here. I'm going to do command point. I believe it's control point on a Windows machine and then select this axis. And then I'm going to go up here to this constraint. A constraint says, Put a rule on this drawing. 
and make it always follow that rule. I'm going to say that those two points are symmetric to that line. So now, while I can still move it in this direction, and I can move it in this direction, it stays locked on that line. Now I also want to lock it on this line. So I'm going to select that point. I'm going to Command and select that point. Select that point. And once again, I'm going to say it's symmetric. So I've now locked my box basically on the center of the screen. Now every once in a while when you see the screen goes black like that, that's a bug in FreeCAD. If you go to select an area where there's no object, the screen goes black. Okay, now, how big do I want this to be? Well, let me get a ruler out here. I'm going to measure my prototype, and it's 150 millimeters. So let's take and select this line here. And then we can put a dimension on it. Whoops. Here we go. Select. And 150, not 1150. There we go. Now that's still too big for my screen. So I'm going to use the Command minus button to zoom back in. Now you can zoom with the scroll wheel. I find it's very hard to control that. So I like Command minus Command plus. Command plus on a Mac is actually Command shift plus because the plus is the top symbol on the key. So now I'm going to uh, take and right click, click to get out of that tool. Select this axis. In this case, I'm going to put a vertical dimension on it, and we're going to make that 30. Okay, now that we have our object fully dimensioned, I'm going to close the object, and I'm going to zoom back out so we can see it. Select an edge of the object, and select to pad it, or to make it three-dimensional, to give it depth. So if I scroll here, we'll see that we now have depth. How much depth? We have 10 millimeters. We're going to change that to 3 millimeters and click on OK. Now that we have our rectangle, I need to cut out this shape. So to cut out this shape, I'm going to select a surface and create a new sketch on that surface. I'm going to use a polyline. So we'll put that line right on this axis here and make our first point right on this axis, make our next point, on this axis, make our next point, on this ad, ad axis, let's see if we can get there, there we go, and then we want to wait for this point to actually turn white, it's a little tricky to get it right there, if we don't get it right there I'll show you a trick for it, well let's actually put it over here for right now, and then click the right button to dismiss the tool. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is let's make these two points here so they're at ex the exactly same point, so they're coincident. So I'm going to select this point, and then I'm going to command and select this point, and click on coincidence, bam, they're now connected. So we now have a diamond that because it's on these axes, we can move around a little, but in essence it's fixed more or less on the center. Let's take and see if we can um, fix it the rest of the way. So I'm going to collect, select this dimension here. And I'm going to give it a horizontal dimension. Let's make it 68. And then I'm going to select this dimension here and this dimension here. And I'm going to say that they are equal. Good. Now let's see what else. We still can move it up or down this way. So let me select this dimension here and this dimension here and we'll put a vertical dimension on it. We'll make it let's say um, 21. Okay, so now the whole thing still can move up and down. So let's take this point and this point and this axis and say that they are symmetric, the friend from before. And now our model is green, which means it's fully constrained. It's locked in place. So let's close our model. We're going to select that model, 
and you have to sort of play around to get to just that edge. There we go. And we can see an edge is selected and we're going to create a pocket. Bam. Since our model is only three millimeters deep, but the length of the pocket is five, we now have a model and let's click OK here. We now have a model that um, is exactly what we're looking for. Now, what if, however, I don't want this to be three millimeters because when I printed the three millimeter one, it was too thick. Well, I can go back to my model. I can go back to the original pad. I can click on pad and I can change this three millimeters to let's say one millimeter. I click on OK, click back on the body, click back on the pocket, and what we can see here is we now have the same object just one millimeter thick. I didn't have to redraw the diamond in the middle or reposition it because all the constraints we're keeping it in place. Now, what do I do to print this? Well, it's really pretty simple. I select the body I want to print, the part I want to print. I do an export. I give it a name. It'll export it as an STL file for our purposes here. Save. Then I can quit out of FreeCAD. And I can take and I can open up Cura or my favorite slicer, whatever slicer I like to use. I've already set it for the MP Monoprice Maker Ultimate 2, which is what I'm going to use. I'm going to open up my model. So let's look at the uh, most recent one. You can see it here. Okay, we will slice that, take 13 minutes, We'll save that file to an SD card. I'll walk it over to my Ultimaker 2. And then I'm printing, as I said, on MatterHacker Build PLA. Now, why am I using MatterHacker Build PLA? Well, in particular for the really thin one, the layer adhesion on the MatterHacker Build PLA, in addition, the colors are beautiful, but the layer adhesion is really good. So this is gonna be nice and strong. It's going to stick together and it's going to produce a wonderful, easy to use mask, which depending on my mood can be in a variety of beautiful colors that I can use to keep people around me safe and to keep myself safe. So folks, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was useful to you. If it was, give me a thumbs up and all of the models will be linked in the description below the video. So make sure you go back and look at the description below the video and you'll find the models for directly 3D printing these. And you'll also find the free CAD three-dimensional model so you can modify it yourself. Thanks again. Have a good day. Let's keep learning things together.